What in the fuck is up, y'all? It's your boy Winston motherfucking Wolf. I'm back. I just want to do a quick review about the long-awaited Star Trek spinoff show, Picard. Heavy spoilers are going to be in this. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the plot and kind of what the show is about. So, the first episode starts off with Wesley Crusher. You see him go up to a house. He's banging on the door. He's like, Captain, Captain, open up, open up. Come on, I've been trying to call you. You ain't been answering. Come on, I need, you know, I really need to talk to you. Open up. So, door finally opens up. You see Jean-Luc. He's just fucking all drunk. He's all fucked up. He's just like, yeah, what do you want? He's just... He's like, he's like, Captain, he's like, oh, I need to talk to you. This, you know, some shit went down. We, we need your help. He's like, what? So he lets Wesley in. The house is all dark. There's fucking empty wine bottles everywhere. There's empty pizza boxes and shit. It's early in the morning, but Jean-Luc is already fucking pissed drunk. You know, like, what the fuck's going on here? So uh, Wesley's like, yeah, you know, Captain, uh, you know, we need your help. And like before he can even get, you know, the, the reason, you know, what he needs help with. Picard's like, I fucking saved you, I fucking, when you were a boy, I fucking saved you, you have the nerve to ask more for me. And he's just cussing Wesley on Wesley, he's like, alright, well, I'm gonna fucking come back tomorrow, you know, when you're not fucked up. So, uh, so he fucking leaves, and that night Wesley has a fucking nightmare, and he's a young boy in his nightmare, and he's having kind of like a flashback, and there's like, you can't tell, there's something trying to get at him, there, it's, you can't tell if it's a person or an animal, or something trying to, you know, get him. So the next day he goes back to Jean-Luc's house. He hopes he's sober, but he goes back again in the morning. Jean-Luc again is fucked up. He's all drunk. And he's like, Captain, you know, I came back one more time to ask for your help. You know, you know, your friends are in trouble. And he was like, but, uh, you know, what, you know, what were you talking about that, you, you know, you know, you saved me from? And he was like, I, I fucking saved you from that fucking black bastard. And you're like, whoa, okay, so the car show is going to be like that. All right. And Wesley's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, Worf, that black son of a bitch. He was like, when he tried to penetrate you. And you're just, you're like, all right, yo, Star Trek really, yeah, man, they're, they're really going left field with this Picard show. You know, and, you know, Jean, you already know he's talking about rape, but Jean-Luc's too fucking classy to be like, he tried to fucking rape you. You know, so he said penetrate. So, I mean, you know, with that accent and his, you know, his Shakespearean acting, it, it really rolls off the tongue. So he's like, what? You fucking Worf, Worf, Worf tried to, you know, what I, and he's just like, yes, that black bastard tried to penetrate you. It's a part of the, I mean, fucking Star Trek fans that are watching this, you're going to know it's common knowledge for fucking Klingon culture to where if there's, you know, young boys around that warriors find the youngest boy and they try to, you know, rape them. It's kind of a what do you call it, uh, like a rite of passage, or it's, you know, to turn them into warriors or something, so it's all part of the Klingon culture, just raping the youngest boy that's around, but, you know, Picard, he wasn't having that, he's just like, you fucking suck, but, I mean, you know, the language and shit that they use, and, and, and the fact that they're touching on that part of uh, Klingon history that's always been controversial, you know, the whole, the whole boy raping part, uh, I mean, automatically, you know, this show is, you know, it's really, you know, they're really going for, uh, a part of the Star Trek universe that hasn't been touched, no pun intended. So, he's like, so Wesley's like, all right, well, let's just, you know, I'm going to have to deal with this later. But, you know, your friends are in trouble. Um, so, he's, you know, he's like, uh, Data's been captured. He's been captured by the Ferengi. But the Ferengi also captured some uh, Borg, like, two Borg soldiers. I don't know what they call Borg, fucking collective, Borg, whatever. They got two board collective people, soldiers, whatever, and then they got Data. So the fucking Ferengi are trying to make like a fucking super soldier android robot. And he's like, yo, he's like, yo, Data needs your help, blah, blah. And like, that's like the one soft spot. You can tell when he says that Data's in trouble. That, you you know, you see Picard like, oh, shit, yo, Data, yo, that's my fucking homeboy right there. I don't really don't give a fuck about the rest. Of it. it seems like he don't give a fuck about the rest of them. But like once he brings up that Data's in trouble... And that the Ferengi are, you know, they're basically going to fucking cut him up and, you know what I'm saying, they're not, he's not going to be alive. Or as as alive as Data can be. So then he's like, well, you know, uh, you know, you know, we need to go get Jordy. And he's like, he's like, fuck that black bastard. They, they do use the F word. And he, again, he's like, he's like, he's like, fuck that black bastard. I don't fucking trust him. And Wesley's like, what the fuck? I don't, yo, what's up with Jordy? I thought you were cool with Jordy. And he's like, I let him fucking house sit. And then when I came home, some CDs were fucking missing. So, I mean, Picard, you don't know if he's just being petty, because, I mean, I, I think we've all had friends that we've let borrow CDs or whatever, and we've never got it back, but, you know what I'm saying, we really don't, you know, take it that far. 
Um, but he seems really upset by, you know, George, as he looks at, like, you know, like, hey, I let you fucking house it, and you're gonna steal my CD, so, I don't know, um, so, I mean, but there's, but the whole racial aspect of it, of, uh, you know, Picard, you know, calling people black bastards and everything, that's, you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be angry about it, they're gonna be like, man, why did they, you know, Jean-Luc's not a racist, but, I mean, I think that has depth to the character, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, it's wild crazy. He's, you know, talking all this racist shit. But, you know what I'm saying? he He's an older man. You know, the character kind of seems out of it. He's been drinking. And, I mean, granted, Worf tried to fucking, in his words, penetrate Wesley. And then fucking Jordy fucking boosted some fucking CDs from his crib. So, I mean, it's not that he's he's completely out of order, you know, being racist towards them, too. So, I mean, uh so anyways uh what else happened okay uh so then he says uh he's like all right well you know we need to go get Riker. you know we need his help and then fucking picard's like nah he's like we had a falling out too we ain't fucking cool no more I, he's like he's like will just will will don't fuck with me will don't fuck with me like that anymore and he seems kind of hurt he's not like fuck what he's not like how he is with, with like wharf like fuck them He's just like, yeah, Will, Will don't be fucking with me, with me anymore. And then fucking Wesley's like, what happened? And he's like, well, fucking Deanna Troy opened up this quilt shop. And she had a fucking warehouse. Because, you know, her business was going good. And fucking she, John Luke went to go check out the fucking warehouse. That had all Deanna's quilts and shit, you know. And uh, a fucking fire started. And fucking uh, Picard saved Deanna Troy. And not only saved her, but he fucking put the fire out. He, like, went and got a fire extinguisher and shit, put the fire out. So he saved all the quilts, saved the fucking warehouse and shit. And then fucking uh, Deanna Troy was like, yo, I'm going to reward you. And so he tells Wesley, he was like, yo, she rewarded me by by pleasuring me with her mouth. And just, uh, I mean, again, just hearing those words with, with Patrick Stewart's Shakespearean training and the accent, you're just like, man, it just, it flows. It's so poetic. She she pleasured me with her mouth it's just fucking but uh but you know like fucking uh deanna troy she's believes and talks shit out she ain't gonna lie to fucking Riker. so she tells Riker. Riker bugs the fucker he's like yeah fuck so they don't really get into it but i mean obviously fucking Riker ain't gonna be cool with picard after you know she did that for him um so anyway so wesley calls he's just going back and forth with fucking uh picard pretty much like this whole episode if you expect action or anything, you're really not going to get it. It's pretty much just letting you know, like, what he's been up to, what the characters have been up to. It's really, I think he's going to get, uh, you know, like an Emmy or a fucking Golden Globe, like, just based off of this episode. Because this is straight up character building right here. This is straight up acting. I think this is the best acting Patrick Stewart's done since Dune. So, so uh, Wesley fucking calls his mom Beverly. He's like, yo, fucking... Yo, fucking, I don't know, Captain's wildin', he's just, he's in a bad place right now, he's talking wild crazy shit, um, yo, can you talk to him, so he's, just, she's like, yeah, fucking put him on the phone, so he's like, yo, yo, Captain, yo, uh, yo, yo, can you talk to my mom, she wants to talk to you, so he's like, yeah, fuck it. so he goes in there, so fucking, you know, Wesley goes in the other room, you know, to let him talk, and he looks over, like, along the wall in the corner, and he sees, He's, you see his face, and then you see what he's looking at, because he's like, oh, fuck. And he sees there's jars of urine, and then there's smaller jars of fucking clipped fingernails. So, Jean-Luc's like, you could tell something mentally ain't right with him. Like, he's on some fucking Howard Hughes shit. And fucking Wesley's like, oh, fuck. But in the background... You hear Jean-Luc just arguing with fucking, with uh, Beverly. He's just like, so you have the fucking nerve. And yeah, they drop, they drop F-bombs in this. They fucking, it's, this, this is the fucking Star Trek show you never expected. This is like, but I mean, but I'm digging it though. But he's, he's just fucking, he's like, you fucking, I, everything I've done for you all grateful motherfuckers. I saved your son from that fucking black bumpy headed son of a bitch. You just hear him fucking. This is going on in the background. So when you when you watch the episode, just when the part when when Wesley sees all the piss in the jars, just listen because they don't they don't put it on front street. It's very subtle, but you, you hear it in the background. And just I think the fucking choice to add the 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 racial element too. I mean I mean again I think that's that totally. 
it's going to pay off during the season because you're going to fucking, by the time this this whole series is over, Jean-Luc is going to be such a complicated, deep character. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I'm, I'm just really shocked at the quality of the writing and, and, and just the direction that they've taken the Jean-Luc character. I mean, and just in this first episode. But, uh, you know, he fucking sits there talks with him uh beverly says something to him so he's just like fine fuck it fuck it fuck it and then you just hear something crash like he like just threw the phone out or whatever he's like all right let's fucking go come on and he's just getting his shit together and then they just kind of end the episode where like the camera just zooms in on wesley's face and he's like oh fuck so i mean but they got me first episode a lot of shows it it takes maybe you know two or three episodes but with this god damn you know this is a fucking man this is fucking some trek you never seen before it's some star trek for your motherfucking ass but um yeah i give it fucking shit man you know like i said my my rating system is usually between one dog bone for shit garbage movies and shit and five dog bones this is fucking 10 sometimes i gotta go 10 dog bones because the show is just so good i'm expecting picard to be like the next sopranos um i hope this runs for at least five seasons man because if if fucking picard and patrick stewart is bringing the heat like this in the in the first episode woo! I can't, I can't wait to see, you know what I'm saying, what they do, you know, what they're going to have for the second season, third season, because right now, fucking Picard is wiling out, he's fucking wiling in this first episode, but, yeah, um, damn, Picard, check it out, uh, debut episode, um, it debuts tomorrow, but I, I had the chance, I, you know what I'm saying, I got, I got some hookups, you know what I'm saying, so I got, I got a chance to see it early, so I just kind of wanted to, you know, do a quick review because I ain't really been doing reviews that much and, you know, just let you guys know how good this show is. But yeah, Picard, first episode, 10 Dog Bones. Um, damn, can't wait for the second episode. This is your boy Winston Wolf and I'll check y'all later. Have a good night.